UFC Mexico. We had a great co-main event between Ortega and Rodriguez. Uh, wonderful display of heart. And uh, Ortega's a dog. T-City is still here. Still here, still fighting, still playing. I got a couple things that I picked up off of this. And the first one is, uh, no matter all that flash shit, like, this is from, like, a martial artist, a martial artist perspective. Flashiness does nothing against boxing and grappling. If you can box and you can grapple, you're, you're good to go in the MMA. See, Yair had all this great flash. And he was hurting. He was digging. He was visually mixing up shots. He had uh, Ortega down pretty bad. But Ortega, is a, he's a grinder. So he's like, okay, I just got to stay in the face. Like, he can't really pick me apart like that if I'm still moving in on him. And then, uh, for some reason, Rodriguez had some bright idea to try to grapple a little bit. I saw him that he tried a, um, a judo flip or a hip toss. Uh, he went down to the ground with them. I'm like, why are you staying on the ground with them? Dude, force that man to fight. Like, Ortega's getting off his back. He's rangy. I didn't realize the size differential. Like, when I was watching, like, the grappling exchange, it looked like a giant, like, tarantula on a grasshopper. And I was like, dude, he's in trouble. Like, every time he went to the ground, Ortega was doing an excellent strategy of, like, tiring uh, Rodriguez out, re- using that time to recover, forcing him to play defensive um, guard from the uh, from the top mount, which is a, another critical element. Because if you could tire a guy out from top mount and he's trying to hit you, he's not getting anything off, you can recover and you gas him out. So you got a better chance when you get up for exchange or you do an explosion. And Ortega was doing that masterfully. It was it was it was very very good to watch like that type of grappling um, exchange. Yeah, but Rodriguez he's still good. He was still tagging. He still he had him hurt, man. A lot of shots had him hurt. Uh, Bust that nose up pretty quickly. But once again, boxing and grappling. If you can control the range, you can control the fight. So anyway, uh, in the third round, early in the third, Ortega caught him slipping. Put that fucking uh, I think it was an anaconda or a Darce. I forget the ones when it's over the shoulder. Locked that shit up, got his hips over, and that was a wrap. Squeezed in. Game time. So, great time. Uh, well, no, great um, heart, great ability by uh, Ortega. So, let's get to the fun part, like the storylines and things that really develop. So, now we got a situation where T-City can actually make a strong push to get that championship fight. He's right there because if, if you look at the timeline, Max Holloway is currently tied up with Gaethje, and that's likely going to be a war. That's likely going to be a war. So Max might be out of condition for a little bit longer than we might expect. So it's pretty much too much race, a two-man race between T-City and uh, Volk. And if I'm T-City, I'm yelling from the mountaintops. And I'm just, I'm picking a fight with Ilya. <laughs> get Tempora, get me Tempora. Like, look, I pretty much beat Volk. Volk was out on his back. <laughs> I had him down, locked up. So I can get this guy. Ilya's nothing. If I can grapple, I'm going to be the new champ. And uh, this is interesting because now Volk is in a – he has to learn how to campaign. And Volk had a very good campaign when he's champion, but I'm very interested to see how he campaigns to get this rematch. Because Ilya, if I'm Ilya, I'm avoiding Volk at all costs. At all costs. I'm trying to see, stay, stay, steer as far away from Volk as I can. Because Volk, during that fight, was actually getting to uh, Tapura pretty well. Like It wasn't like it was a one-sided beating. He just got caught on the fence. Uh, took a shot, and it was just a hand exchange. And if you get caught in the chin with a, a hand exchange, bro, it doesn't matter, like, how well you want to fight. You're going to sleep. And he rolled into it. So it's like, out. So Ilya's like, okay, I was kind of taking a little bit of damage. Volk is going to come back with a vengeance. Let me go get T-City. He's a more beatable opponent, and he's going to sell a little bit better than Volk. And for doing this, Spain doesn't matter. I'm the draw anyway. So it's not like Volk is bringing an audience to um, Spain. And T-City just has a better... Uh, He's just, he's just an easier opponent for more money. And if you if you follow the Chell Sun and Bad Guy um, handy book for how to pick a fight, make a fight, you want to fight the easiest fight for the most amount of money and get in front of the biggest crowd. And T-City definitely fits that description. So if I'm Ilya, I'm steering my own career, and I'm saying, T-City, we need fresh contenders. We don't want to see Volk. I already dusted him. I, I'm just saying that's the that's the storyline I'm laying out. But this, this shit about fighting Connor, are you fucking retarded? Fighting Sugar Sean, like why, why, why are we unifying the? T- why, why, why is he coming up to fight you? You, you have one fight, and it's not to say that you can't go double champ or it's not it like defending as a champ. It's just there's a bunch of guys that can go run the featherweight, and Sean still got some guys to work with. He got Marab, so this idea of him trying to go up to fight Connor, like why would Connor even fight you? It makes no logic. So if I'm if I'm Elliot, 
I'm calling out to city. I'm trying to get that Spain date locked up, and I need those pay per view points. Get get paid, brother. Get paid. But anyway, man, yeah, um, I didn't really watch the flyweight fight. Didn't give a shit too much. Um, don't know any of those guys. You know, I, I apologize. The flyweight's terribly boring. Terribly, terribly boring. One guy plays Pokemon all day. Another guy called a nigga motherfucker, and I don't even know who the champion is. I do. I do remember the guy with uh, Figueroa with the the little God of War fucking zigzag in his hair and the white hair and the red. But outside of that, I know nobody in the flyweight. But anyway, thank you guys for listening. Uh, appreciate it. Oh.